Welcome to the part three of our wind forecast presentation. In the last session, we completed entry of the basic data information and record information. So what I'm going to work through here is some of the options that you have once you've completed that or as part of the result. We can now look at our profit and loss, clicking on, selecting the profit and loss. Now we've got our 12 month layout, information is projected, our sales, our revenue broken into our sections. I can see my subtotal column, I can double click on that and expand it down. Nice feature of this version of Wind Forecast, I can double click on products. Now I can see to myself that we should really increase the price in December to 110. And you'll notice there the calculations move to 44,000. I click back there <coughs> and there is our forecast automatically updated. Scrolling down here, we can see all the way down to our projected net profit. You will notice interest has been calculated already, yet we've made no provision for any of that. And you will see here that depreciation has automatically been added to it as a result of fitting up the fixed assets. My cash flow. I can open, open up with my opening cash flow, 4,500 invoice receipts in the first month. Expenditure going out of 16 net cash flow minus 11 grand. I then have my $20,000 loan capital and my other expenses with a net cash flow coming out of 26 for that month and that projecting to a healthy surplus at the end of the 12 month period. So cash flow and we have done nothing more than dictate into when we're setting up the records how that information there. Balance sheet, my rolling monthly ongoing position projected out on the single page so I can present that quite happily and obviously all balances to the right figures and simply no errors. I also have a range of additional field, uh, reports such as a funds flow, ratios and statistics, assumptions and parameters, schedules for input data, employee, fixed assets, loans and GST. When I run into the options such as um, <coughs> entering actuals, I will then receive with various reports. And that. So we can now save this forecast. And a couple of facilities allow us, features in one forecast allow us to really make some use of this. One of those options is what we call flexing. So my sales in this section total $57,000, $32,089. I will increase the sales section by 20%. I'm now flexing it. What's happened to this is this figure has increased from 57 to 68,000. So all of my reports now show that increased revenue and the increased results of that. I can, so I can flex by the section. I can also say this individual record will go up by another 10% on top of it, giving it a total flex of 132%. As such, we could now do two things to this. We can save this, or we can unflex this and go back to the baseline. But it's the ability to look at that what if analysis that will improve your information and management. Okay. The second feature we used to provide is the entry of actuals. And so what we're able to do with actuals is create another forecast, which is the actuals forecast. And under the facility and options within here, we can now enter or import the P&L and balance sheet information. For demonstration purposes, I will just enter that we did $38,765 and our details one was 993, but our new records, so on our product C we did 36,789. What I then can do is look at our variance reports. My profit and loss variance was 330, projected to be 38,000, my budget's 40, $1,200 down, year to date those figures roll on. So that's reporting of actuals and each month you roll the month over, set the actuals to the next month and so forth. In addition, because actuals is now a copy of the original forecast, we can go and reforecast. So we now see that under product this, we're going to do 500 and then 600. My projection PL now shows me 600 and 500 against this month's actuals. So 
as I move through the year, the actuals recal actual months take place, replace the projected months, but my actual projected figure is the reflection of what we think will happen and what will happen. I now move into month two, May, and I'm going to create a revised budget. Right. I will very quickly here just load in some data. For May, 55, 7, 8, 9. And that, so we've just got some information to look at. We now have the ability under our variance report, profit and loss, to report that against our revised budget of 50, etc., of 9, or view variance report against our original budget of $40,000. So you now have both forecasting but rolling forecasts and actual reporting in each of those. So at any stage you do that. You can also within this particular budget now go back and produce an original budget or a revised budget. So maintaining this all in one single database. So reporting allows us to e do that, use the actuals to present that. And the final thing we will do here is we'll have this actuals. We'll save that. <coughs> one of the other things we may want to do is lengthen the forecast. Having done our one year, we will now create, I won't get that far, three, four more years to March 30, 2013. So now when I look at it, 2011 has got those rolling figures. I now, now, now may go into our I mean later years forecast and I can say increase for period 11 based on last year by 10%, volumes by 5%, costs by 20% and what this forecast will now do is reflect those changes. So very simple what if and forecasting generation tools. We support graphing so you can actually present your data in different formats, the base graph starts like that and then we're able to add additional records such as gross profit, net profit and from the cash flow we'll put the closing bank account. All right, and as that layout's a little uneasy, difficult to read, we'll change it to a 3D bar graph and apply that those sort of presentations and we'll cut the range down so we can just see the one month. So there's a range of features and facilities for that. Right, so as you can see the wind forecast tool has provided a lot of this and removed a lot of the hard work and drudgery and at all stages we've maintained a balanced forecast. When forecasts are sold in a single computer license a single computer license with consolidation features and as a network license one user, two user, three user standard or network license one user, two user, three user with consolidation above three users we sell a unlimited user, a limit, unlimited user license. Additionally we run training courses which are run in our Auckland offices or with enough demand in offices or places around the country and you may purchase the e-learning modules which does the basic essentials course from us as an online training that covers the base of the features that I've demonstrated to you today. So on top of the product we have the ability to support consolidations, foreign currencies and many other features which I haven't covered. Hopefully that has given you a sufficient enough overview of the product to understand why it's so much easier and better to budget and forecast than this than using other methods. I thank you for your time and look forward to you contacting my people or staff and hopefully we can help you improve your budgeting process. Thank you.